Hello, my name is Meridian Grace, and I'd like to welcome you to the Awakening Health Show. Today, we're going to talk about the digestive system. You know, it's not what we put into our mouths that matters so much as what we're able to absorb. And I would imagine if you're watching this show, you have a real interest in eating healthy food. But the most important part is that we're able to really effectively digest it. It's so important, in fact, that it affects every imaginable thing in our bodies. Most of us don't think about this, but our digestion has to do with our body's ability to break down proteins into amino acids so that we can absorb them. And these amino acids are literally involved in the health of every organ, every tissue, and every cell of your body. The same is true with minerals and trace minerals. Trace minerals in particular are coenzymes for the function of every cell and organ in your body. So if you're not able to properly break down your foods, you might be spending a fortune on beautiful organic food that you're not getting the benefit from. But at least you're not going to be getting hormones, preservatives, and antibiotics in your food, um, which would cause all kinds of toxic issues for you and cause detriment over time and possibly even affect the amount of years that you have on this earth. So it is always wise to choose the highest quality foods that you can. Um, for your animal pro products, they should be grass-fed or pasture-raised by farmers that you trust that are not adding all kinds of toxic things to feed if they happen to have a period of time when the uh, pastures are not producing enough greens for those animals. And, you know, if you're going to be um, eating other foods, your, of course, your vegetables and your fruits, it would be wonderful if they were grown on really rich soil that has the mineral content that can then provide these minerals to the foods so that you can eat them. You know, it all starts really with the soil. And without healthy soil that has lots of minerals in it and lots of really good microorganisms that can break down the matter that turns into soil, we basically are not getting what we need from our food. So again, a very, very important thing for us all to consider is what, how are we growing our foods and what are we doing to protect the quality of the soil on our earth? And one of the things that we can do is we can vote with our dollars by only buying foods from organic farmers who have consciousness about this process of building the soil, supporting the soil, rather than throwing all kinds of toxic chemicals and synthetic minerals into the soil. So these are very, very important things when it comes right down to making selections because we're not going to be able to um, get our minerals from a plant if they're not in there. Just to give you an example, um, I used to have all of my pregnant women make um, salads out of spinach and use an amino acid called L-cysteine, which has a very lemony flavor on the spinach, which would pull the iron out of the spinach and make it really absorbable for them during their pregnancy so they wouldn't have to take different iron supplements that could be um, really uncomfortable to their digestive system and cause constipation. Of course, there's other supplements out there, but that's what their medical doctors wanted them to take was um, a form of um, iron that was really constipating. And 20 years ago, those salads worked. That would bring their iron levels up. You could see it in their blood work. It was tangible. There it was. The numbers don't lie. But nowadays, there is so little iron in spinach that you can't do that any longer. And you'll see that reflected in the numbers. You could have someone eat a spinach salad with lunch and dinner every day with L-cysteine on it, and their iron levels are not going to go up unless they found a farmer who's figured out how to keep the iron in the soil. So these are very, very important issues that we're facing, all of us as we're seeing these enormous amounts of diseases showing up that never were around before. And it has so much to do with the foods that we're ingesting and also the things that we're doing to our bodies that are making it more and more difficult for us to be able to digest. So one thing that I would like you to think about 
is something called gut flora. Over 90% of the cells in our body are microorganisms, and a great percentage of that is gut flora. That flora is involved with your body's ability to protect you, to break down nutrients, and to help you to truly absorb the nutrients that you need from your food. If you don't have healthy gut flora, you're not going to be able to digest your food. And that's a big problem. You're not going to be able to absorb the minerals that you need, the amino acids that you need, the phytonutrients, all of the subtle things, the life force that's in those foods are not going to be able to do the beautiful thing that they were designed to do for us if you don't have healthy gut flora. So let's kind of take a little bit of a look at what we've been doing in this day and age that is so detrimental to our gut flora. The first thing is, when you take an antibiotic, it kills all of the weaker or more delicate forms of uh, microorganisms first. And those happen to be the majority of what's in your gut. And in order to um, get to the point where it's strong enough to kill the pathogenic things like a bacterial infection, let's say, of pneumonia or tuberculosis or um, I, something of that nature, of, of a parasite, you're going to be killing off an enormous amount of the really important, protective, much more delicate gut flora when you take that antibiotic. Antibiotics have not been around that long, and we now have three generations of people who have most likely taken antibiotics more than once in their life, and many people who have used antibiotics prophylactically and for you know, acne and things like that, where they've taken it every day for months, if not years, destroying the foundation of their gut flora. And this is then passed on to your progeny. So when you do something like this, you're not only hurting yourself, but you're hurting your entire genetic line that f comes after you. We basically receive our first gut flora as we pass through the birth canal um, to come into this world. It's uh, as we pass through the, the birth canal, we have the gut flora touching our entire body, and we also have it um, I, on our lips, and our mouths, and our eyes, ears, as it goes through the birth canal because the birth canal is rich with these protective bacteria. And so many children these days are being born C-section, so they don't even get that first inoculation from their mother in this way. Now, the second way that we get really wonderful gut flora is through nursing, and we get a tremendous amount of support for our immune system, which is very important for our digestion also. The majority, by the way, of all the benefits that we get from our from our, for our immune system are located in the intestine itself, much of it from something called the payer's patches in the small intestines. And so we can really, really be in trouble if we don't nurse and get the benefits of colostrum in our first early days to start giving us some type of immunological support. So, you know, this goes all the way back to the very, very beginning of life, how we're setting ourselves up to have digestive issues. Now, thank God our bodies are so incredibly um, resourceful. The body's job is survival. And so the body will do whatever it possibly can to support us in being able to heal. And one of the amazing things that supports us in this process is a rhythm of living and dying. Every blood cell takes, red blood cell, is, has about a 120 day lifespan. So it's born, and then it goes through a process, what we could call regulation, of you know, building, growing, doing what it needs to do, breaking down things, respirating, all these different processes that go on in the cell, and then eventually it gets recycled. It gets broken down and recycled and released through one of the many ways, either through urine, through uh, feces through sweating or whatever so that those um, byproducts leave. 
And it's very important that we have this recycling process going on inside of us because if we don't, we would be bigger than houses. I mean, our, we would just not be able to release anything, any toxic. So we have to have a living and a dying process. Well, every cell in our body is replaced within seven years and many in very, very short periods of time, like our outer skin cells. I mean, all you have to do is have a bright light or a shaft of light come into your house and you'll see all these little you know, floating things in the air that looks like dust particles, but mo the majority of it is actually your skin cells. And uh, there are some wonderful things you can do just by vacuuming your bed with a filter and you can see all of the skin cells that you've released while you were sleeping, trillions of them. So our bodies are constantly replenishing. And if you eat a really healthy diet for seven years and you reduce your stress to the point that you can feel at peace with yourself and at peace with your job and at peace with your family and with life, uh, because our emotional state has a tremendous impact on our digestive system. And, you know, if you receive fresh air, because let's face it, we can't even live for, you know, 10 minutes without air to breathe, and clean water, oh my goodness, clean water is also so important and another one of those things we need to really get educated on as to what's happening to our water supply these days. But clean water is also extremely important. And there's something called the terrain of our body. And the terrain is like the soil to the earth. And if we have a healthy terrain, and a couple of other things besides what we've just mentioned, would be the proper pHs in the different systems of the body that really affect your terrain. Another thing that really affects your terrain is your oxygen. You know, are you able to clear out toxins with carbon dioxide and have enough oxygen to oxygenate your cells? Is there this proper respiration of release and receiving of oxygen into your cells? It's a very important part of your terrain. And another very important part is the electrical aspect of it. The electron and proton and neutron aspects because our cells need to actually repel each other by having enough electrical charge on the outside of them so that they can float free in the um, uh, interstitial and extrastitial fluids so that they can absorb the nutrients that they need in this way. But if they're all clumped up, in other words, if there's both electrical and, I mean, yeah, um, electro, tro, electrons and protons on the outer ring of the cell, they will come together, just like a magnet. You know, if you have two sides of the same magnet, try to put them together, they won't come together. So it creates this space so that they actually can float free in the, in the fluid. But if you have a, um, a positive and a negative charge, an electron and a proton, then they will come together, clump together, and then we have difficulty because the cell surface, the cell membrane, is not able to absorb the nutrients that it needs from its uh, liquid environment, and it's also not able, where it's smashed together, to be able to release the toxins that are part of its cellular respiration and the production of energy for us through um, the ATP process and Krebs cycle. It's not able to release that back into the fluid to be broken down and taken care of. So digestion is enormously important. Every aspect of it affects every part of our lives. And a very big part of the work that I've been doing has a lot to do with neurological disease and autism and ADD and ADHD and autoimmune diseases, MS and Parkinson's and things of that nature. And what we find is if we can get the digestive system working really well, it can help enormously to bring health back to the body because the digestive system is so incredibly important in this whole process. In our intestines, we have something that are called villi. And um, if you were to look at these on an electron microscope, it almost looks like a woolly mammoth. These, these little villi, that are like little hairs, are so thick that, and healthy, in a healthy villi situation, that um, you know it would seem like impossible to get anything through them. <clears throat> and that's what we want.
We want to have a really healthy villi that's thick, thick, thick hairs. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, what's happening now is that because of the state of the foods that we're eating and the toxins that we're eating, the villi are not being properly supported. And the cell um, process of their um, replication is not happening the way that it should. And what we're dealing with is something called leaky gut, or we're also seeing that these villi have more and more spaces between them. So the villi um, in the intestines are, um, provide a protective, almost like a membrane, but it's like a living organism type of a rem membrane. And they're extremely thick in a healthy person. And they do not allow the materials that are inside the intestine to get out into the fluids of the body, into, into the interstitium around them. And um, if that is harmed, if there are gaps, if we have leaky gut syndrome, then what happens is that toxins are able to get out into the bloodstream, into the interstitial fluid. And this then floats around in the body looking for a place to land. And what can happen is that these toxic materials that are moving through the blood can attach themselves to different cells and organs of tissues. And if this happens, then the immune system recognizes something that is not human, that's not the typical cell looking the way it's supposed to, and it will come to protect you by killing that cell, which could be part of an organ or tissue of your own body that has this other toxic material added to it. When this happens, we have autoimmune disease. So you can see how incredibly important really high quality digestion is in order to be healthy. Now I'm going to talk to you about an experiment that you may have done when you were a child um, in school, or maybe you've just found this to happen at home, but if you mix something like apple cider vinegar and bicarbonate of soda, there will be this big explosion that happens. And we have a similar type explosion that is absolutely necessary for us to have a really high quality of digestion in our bodies. So basically, I'm going to explain this to you. Because so many people think that alkaline, being alkaline is the most important thing. And they'll have you know slogans like alkalinize or die or things of that nature. What we really need to do is be balanced. And we need to understand the times in the digestive process where acidity is really important. And we need to understand the times of the process where alkalinity is really important. So our stomachs, when they don't have food in them, can be as low as a 0.8 on the pH scale. The pH scale goes from 0 to 14. 7 is neutral. 0.8 is less than 1. That is so acid that if you were to place a drop on your skin, it would just eat right through it immediately. And yet this lives in our stomachs as an, and is incredibly important for us. Now, the second thing that we want to know is that when food comes into the stomach, it goes up to it between a 2 and a 3. It gets diluted by, this, um, by the foods that are added to the stomach acid. And we need this incredibly acid substance to do a number of things for us. First of all, to break down our proteins and start the process of breaking them down into amino acids. And also to start breaking down our um, uh, minerals into trace minerals. And also to kill any bacteria and microorganisms that are not healthy for us and also to kill any of the um, I, parasites that may have made it in to our food as well. So um, we also need to look at the whole issue with the microorganisms that are broken down, that are pathogenic, once they also hit the stomach. So there are actually bacteria that can live in a stomach acid that's higher than two or three. And if you happen to have these in your stomach, they cause um, and contribute to a whole fermentation process. 
we need this high acid in order to break down our foods. And the fermentation that can happen in its place can create a tremendous amount of gas and bloating. So if you burp, which is gas, or you notice that your clothes are tighter uh, in the evening than they are in the morning, then you are dealing with a problem of not having a, a acid enough stomach. And that can be a true problem for us. We have a friend who's come to join us today. She wants to know about the digestive system too. So anyway, um, it's a very important thing for us to really understand what we need to do in order to care for our stomach acid. So one thing that we can do that's very helpful to upregulate the stomach acid is to have a little bit of homemade sauerkraut juice. And in other videos, we're going to be teaching you how to make sauerkraut and, um, and how to increase the amount of sauerkraut juice that you have. But this will actually stimulate your own body's production of hydrochloric acid. There are also wonderful herbs that they've known about in China and India. One of them is gentian, another one is ginger, that also are very helpful in stimulating your, um, your body's production of hydrochloric acid. And um, Swedish bitters, which they've known about for many, many years, and you can buy in, in almost all of your grocery stores and pharmacies in Europe, and most many restaurants there will actually ask you if you'd like Swedish bitters with your meal. Um, these also help to increase your stomach acid. So all of these are really bene very beneficial. Also, perhaps having a little bit of apple cider vinegar and warm water with ginger is um, a lovely way to support the production of your own hydrochloric acid. So these are things that you can do to support hydrochloric acid production. And of course, other things that are very helpful is you can make it easier on your hydrochloric acid to do its job if you've done a really good job of chewing your food first. I find it really interesting in some of the Ayurvedic texts how they talk about that there's these gods and goddesses that are you know, living inside of us and they're inside our mouths and they're inside all of the organs of the body and they all have different functions. And one of the things that you know, we want to be um, aware of here is the whole science that we now have called cytokines. And um, basically in India they call those cytokines gods and goddesses. But what they realized is that if you chew your food well enough, the gods and goddesses in your mouth will talk to your liver and your gallbladder and your stomach and warn your body what's coming next. So it'll help your body to know what to prepare for and how much bile to produce and how much acid to produce and how much pancreatic enzymes to produce. So chew your food well. Um, don't eat in a rush. Don't just swallow it down really quickly. But um, please, you know, take the time to really um, digest your food by chew, by support your digestion by chewing your food well. Then um, the next thing that we need to be aware of is after we have the food sitting in the stomach, and it does sit there, by the way, for as long as an hour so that the acid has a chance to really work on it and break down what's in your stomach. And by the way, hydrochloric acid and um, pepsin and the things that we have in our digestive sy systems naturally are designed for breaking down proteins and fats and things of that nature. So um, our digestive system is not really designed for breaking down a lot of cellulose like cow's digestive systems. Ours are based on acid and pepsin and uh, bile and bicarbonate, and theirs is based on how much um, uh, bacteria they have in these four stomachs that they have. They break down their food with the bacteria and they also have an extremely long intestinal system and the end product of their digestive process is primarily fatty acids. So it's primarily fats that they end up with. Whereas we are designed to really digest proteins and fats as our primary foods. So that's how we digest our foods. Now, the next very, very important process is after the, the stomach acids have had their hour or so, hour and a half, or some people as long as two hours to um, support the breaking down of our proteins and our uh, minerals, then the, the food moves into the duodenum. And in the duodenum, there is a release or a little little nudge that happens that encourages the gallbladder to release bile. Now we're talking about 
a substance that was two to three, which is extremely acid, and all of a sudden it's going to meet an 8.5 from the bile and an 11.2 from the, um, from the uh, pancreas for both enzymes and also bicarbonate. And this causes this incredible like uh, burst of energy that will kill any bacteria that may have made it through from the stomach and will break down almost immediately these proteins into amino acids and your minerals into trace minerals. But if you don't have a very huge difference between your acid and your alkaline, you're not going to have that powerful explosion which breaks things down and that's where the issue of absorption comes in. So people who don't have enough bile or pancreatic enzymes or the bicarbonate from the pancreatic enzymes have a tendency towards bowel gas, flatulence. They also have a tendency towards light colored stool where the stool is lighter than the color of cardboard. Also towards undigested food in their stool and many times strange shapes. And these are all indications that the digestion is off. So I'd like to recap for you quickly just the salient points. The most important is that your stomach acid is strong enough and if it's not you'll be burping, belching, or bloating. And if your bile and uh, pancreatic enzymes and bicarbonate is not strong enough, then you'll be dealing with flatulence and stool that's not perfectly formed. And these are issues that um, can be supported and upregulated by working with alkaline bile salts if you have the flatulence issues and taking foods that support hydrochloric acid or actually hydrochloric acid itself for the stomach acid. So it's our time to end, but I'd like to thank you so much for tuning in and let you know that if you go to our website, we'll be happy to share with you any information and how to obtain the different things that might be helpful for you as you start working on being much more absorbent with your digestion, not just focusing on what you're eating. Thank you so much and have a great day.